To start this story, I'd like to uh, remind everyone that uh, the concept of uh, cancer genetics and mutations causing cancer is a rather novel thing. So uh, back in the early 1970s when I was born, uh, there had not been isolated any single genetic event causing uh, cancer. It was simply not known how cancer developed. So in an attempt to try to treat cancer, uh, various uh, researchers tried um, different approaches and one of the approaches was, was called cancer cell differentiation. And uh, how was cancer cell differentiation started? Well, it was actually started by an original observation by a researcher called Charlotte Friend, who had been uh, studying uh, Friend leukemia uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, mice and uh, she had tried to see if she could um, to, uh, induce um, tumors more efficiently uh, by uh, super-infecting these uh, tumor cells with, uh, with a fr friend leukemia virus. Uh, so to, in order to, to, to get uh, this virus into solution, she um, dissolved uh, the virus in, uh, in the solvent uh, dimethyl sulfoxide or DMSO, which uh, uh, as researcher knows is very uh, potent uh, solvent that can dissolve many organic uh, compounds. Uh, and what she noticed when she uh, super infected these leukemia cells was that in, instead of making them more tumorigenic, uh, these uh, tumor cells actually became red. Uh, and it looked like uh, they had actually uh, all the propensities of, of uh, red blood cells. So something had happened to these uh, cells. So um, in order to, uh, to get insight into this, she um, contacted an, an investigator, uh, Paul Marx, uh, in New York, uh, who was a uh, world leading expert on, um, on hemoglobin synthesis, the, the red molecule inside of red blood cells. And he said that um, most likely what she had uh, enabled uh, to do was to uh, s make these uh, leukemia cells into normal red blood cells. She had differentiated them. So uh, of course Paul Marx got very interested in this as well and worked uh, along um, uh, Charlotte Friend to develop molecules that would be even more potent at inducing this cancer differentiation. Uh, than uh, DMSO, because DMSO had been banned from use in, in uh, patients by the FDA. So in trying to make these uh, different molecules, they ended up with the various uh, types of molecules that, that had an, an acetamide in, 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 the, in the end here. And the most um, potent molecule was uh, bisacetamide, which, where, the bis where um, there were six uh, carbons uh, separating these uh, acetamides. Uh, and uh, this molecule was called uh, hexamethylene bisacetamide, or HMBA. This uh, HMBA molecule was uh, about 140 times more efficient than DMSO in inducing uh, these uh, leukemia cells to becoming red blood cells. So uh, they were uh, very excited about this and they tested this molecule in various types of uh, cancer cells and they could actually see that uh, the molecule was able to stunt the growth or even kill uh, many types of uh, cancer cells in, in, in culture. They had some difficulties showing efficacy of this compound in, uh, in animals, but because of the overwhelming evidence in cell culture, uh, FDA allowed <coughs> Marx and co-workers to, to test this compound in patients, which they did in phase one and could observe that it was not a very toxic substance to, to, to patients and it also had some anti-cancer activities. Then they went on to, uh, to test it in phase two against AML, where they had a few responders, but not, nothing overwhelming. In parallel to these clinical trials, Marx and colleagues also tried to get molecules that were even more efficient th than uh, HMBA. And after many medicinal chemistry attempts, they came up with a molecule called Saha. And Saha is actually, they discovered what Saha binds to, and it turns out to be a so-called HDAC inhibitor. It's an inhibitor of histone deacetylases, and histones are uh, molecules uh, or proteins that uh, bind DNA and is involved in, in regulating expression of genes and compactation of, of DNA. 
So they found that Saha was uh, uh, about uh, 2,000 times more efficient than uh, HMBA, and they also had a target uh, for, uh, for Saha, namely uh, histone deacetylases or HDEX. So they abandoned uh, HMBA for uh, further use. So um, this is a backstory to HMBA, and they, in the paper where they describe the, the function of Saha, uh, they also investigated whether or not HMBA would inhibit HDEX, and they found that it did not. So uh, how did we in this lab end up uh, working on, on uh, HMBA and, and this? And this actually stems from a, a publication for two years back in time, uh, where um, uh, we uh, had uh, tested the efficacy of a BET bromodomain inhibitor in, uh, in uh, MIC-driven uh, uh, lymphoma cells in mice. And um, what we found when we investigated what type of genes were regulated by these BET bromodomain inhibitors, we found that many of these um, genes that were regulated by BET bromodomain inhibitors were also regulated by HDAC inhibitors. And we started to see certain trends that some of the genes being regulated by the BET inhibitor was actually involved in the differentiation of B, cell, uh, B cells and B cell lymphomas. So uh, then um, uh, uh, Lisa and I uh, was discussing this and we uh, started to read up on the literature and we found this thread of papers fr uh, emanating from, from uh, Charlotte Friend's work up until uh, Paul Mark's work. And we simply asked the, the simple question whether or not the target of HMBA could be bet bromonomain proteins. And this is now what we have been uh, investigated for the last years. And we think we have very strong evidence that the, the missing target for HMBA, in fact, is bet bromonomain inhibitors. So what have we then done? Uh, we have found that uh, HMBA uh, can displace BET proteins uh, bound to histones. So if histones bind uh, are, are bound by BET proteins and you have presence of HMBA, the BET protein can no longer bind uh, the, the histone and this uh, makes the cell express different genes. And if this is a cancer cell, uh, the cancer cell responds to this by either stop dividing or uh, die. So we have uh, actually also gone back uh, in time to, to uh, identify the very same cell cells as uh, Charlotte Friend once used. And we've been able to show uh, that uh, not only does HMBA cause these cells to be red, modern BET bromodomain inhibitors that have been developed in the uh, 2000s uh, or later, uh, just the last few years, they also turn uh, these leukemia cells into uh, normal blood cells. So I will show you today some uh, different types of uh, experiments that we've been uh, doing uh, to uh, show that HMBA is a BET bromodomain inhibitor. If HMBA is working as a BET inhibitor, to differentiate male cells. We could predict that a novel BET inhibitor, for example JQ1, would do the same thing. Here I have cultured male cells in the presence of either HMBA or the novel BET inhibitor JQ1. And um, as you can see from the color of the pellet, the untreated cells are white, whereas cells treated with 5 millimole or HMBA for 4 days are red, indicative of erythroid differentiation. When we look at the uh, novel BET inhibitor JQ1, you can see that the male cells are turning red. To investigate if uh, HMBA would be able to uh, kill MIC-driven lymphoma cells just like modern BET inhibitors, Lydia here 
We cultured uh, myc-driven lymphoma cells from mice in vitro in the presence or absence of HMBA for 24 hours. After that, we took the cells and analyzed them in a machine called a flow cytometer, which is here. And what we could observe when analyzing the content of DNA in these cells was that in the normal cells that were untreated, there were about 35% of cells that were actively dividing, that were in this S phase. But when we treated with HMBA, this population of cells was dramatically diminished and the cells could no longer divide. And in fact, when analyzing cells that had less than normal amount of DNA, we could see that these HMBA treated cells actually uh, died by programmed cell death. So this was an indication that HMBA could work just as efficiently as modern BET inhibitors in killing uh, myc driven uh, lymphoma cells. And this data we could even show in a mouse model of lethal B cell lymphoma where administering HMBA to these mice prolonged life by uh, over three times. So this indicates that if HMBA would have been tested in B-cell lymphomas or ma perhaps a myc driven multiple myeloma in the clinic in the 1980s, maybe would, we would be able to use HMBA in the clinic today.